J Lo's new Amazon Prime documentary and musical movie has caused quite a stir over the last week, especially in the Affleck Lopez household. Once a couple 20 years ago, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are now back together, and fans are. Ben is reportedly angry with Jennifer currently after her new movie about their love life was recently released. Insiders told The Heat that Affleck was reportedly scared that J Lo's new film, This Is Me Now, would ruin his career. And apparently, that fear has not dissipated. There is a very real risk that this film will not get the reaction she is expecting. Ben's been complaining to friends this could end up being Jiggly 2.0, they said. It will be especially embarrassing for him considering the career that he has built up and how seriously he takes his projects. He is scared he's made a big mistake getting involved. This is the second project they've worked on together, and since Jiggly was so panned by critics, receiving a 6%. On Rotten Tomatoes and losing over $60 million at the box office, it seems as though Affleck has been worried about the same treatment and it allegedly caused problems in their marriage. Ben Affleck also recently admitted the romance forced him to make major compromises. Jennifer was really inspired by this experience, which is how artists do their work, Affleck said. They get inspired by their personal life. It moves you. I know as a writer and director, I certainly do the same things, but things. Things that are private, I always felt are sacred and special, in part because they are private. So, this was something of an adjustment for me. At a screening earlier this week for the documentary, Lopez said that her husband was a quote, reluctant participant in the whole thing. According to People, she told the audience during a QA session, the other scary part was that I was bringing into it my husband, who was kind of the reluctant participant and a silent participant and all. Affleck still admits his hesitancy with how. Having the spotlight on their relationship. It's the first time that she's done something as an artistic form of expression that was purely for the sake of what she had to express. It was about bringing out the things she felt inside that she just wanted to say, Affleck said. And I don't really love being in the making of a documentary about my personal life, which is why I'm so relieved that it's not really, and it seems like I might be in this, but not really. I was worrying for no reason. The movie wasn't about. Me. It was about the ability to love yourself, and that love story is a lot effing harder to find than Prince Charming. Celebrity matchmaker Alessandra Conti notes that there's been a shift in how the public engages with famous couples. Navigating the complexities of fame and having a very public relationship was challenging back in the early 2000s, but now it has reached a different level. Every couple who is remotely in the public eye experiences an intense level of scrutiny, especially. Especially with the dawn of social media, she told Fox News. However, J Lo and Ben have kept a relatively low profile when it comes to social media, and although they're supporting each other at professional events, they have kept the intimate details of their relationship private. This is a smart strategy, and as long as their privacy is maintained, it is a sustainable situation for him and J Lo. Ben also needs to understand that whoever he dates, he will be scrutinized in the public eye. This is one of the trade offs of fame. She says. In the documentary, the couple admitted they, quote, just crumbled under the pressure of being a tabloid phenomenon and it put a strain on their relationship, leading them to call off their 2003 wedding three days before it was supposed to happen. I had a very firm sense of boundaries initially around the press, while Jen, I don't think, objected to it the way I did. I very much did object to it, Affleck said. Getting back together, I said, listen, one of the things I don't want. Is a relationship on social media. And then I realized it's not a fair thing to ask. It's sort of like you're gonna marry a boat captain, you want to like the water. We're just two people with kind of different approaches trying to learn to compromise. J Lo is no stranger to headlines and tabloid drama, though. Let's go down memory lane and rehash some of J Lo's most shocking controversies. In 2020, Shakira and J Lo co headlined the Super Bowl halftime show, and she was accused of throwing some serious. Shade at Shakira. Lopez was seen getting into a heated debate with an NFL producer about her idea to have caged child performers on stage, a reference to the living conditions that youngsters face at border detention centers. She said, I'm trying to give you something with substance, not just us out there shaking our effing butts and effing belly dancing. I want something real. I want something that's gonna make a statement, that's gonna say that we belong here and we have something to offer.
Joker. The use of the term belly dancing, something which Shakira is very famous for, left many believing that she was dismissing her co-star's contributions. Jennifer Lopez was also accused of being insensitive to her husband's addiction issues in 2023 when she launched her own brand of alcoholic cocktails. The Let's Get Loud singer put her famous name to Delola, a range of drinks created with mixologist Lynette Marrero. But having only just walked down the aisle with Ben Affleck, a recovering alcoholic, this latest business venture left a sour taste for some fans. There's also a rumor that JLo didn't use to sing on her old records. Rumors had been circulating for years that Jennifer Lopez had more than a little vocal help on hits such as Play, Ain't It Funny, and I'm Real. And in 2014, fellow R&B star Ashanti appeared to confirm that these tracks were essentially uncredited duets. Jenny from the Block is another Lopez banger whose chorus you may struggle to hear the lead artist on. In 2019, Natasha Ramos said, J-Lo did indeed go in the studio and lay down background vocals over my voice. So I wouldn't say that she's so much lip syncing. However, the backgrounds are predominantly me, some ad-libs, and laughs as well. Luckily, Ramos doesn't hold a grudge against the Hollywood star, but does against her label for failing to give her proper credit. Last year on TikTok, there was a viral trend going around, fans exposing J-Lo horror stories, and some of these are shocking. One woman described the experience of helping J-Lo at Foot Locker. She said Lopez, quote, cussed me out because the store didn't have the correct size for the shoes she wanted to buy her twins. But that was nothing compared to the story another woman had after Lopez came to stay in a house where she used to work as a maid. She described how a nail artist was called in to give Lopez a pedicure in bed, which the nail tech had to do upside down because Lopez, who was laying on her stomach, refused to roll over onto her back. And if you're thinking of making eye contact with JLo, never do it. A TikToker who says that her father worked as a driver for a car company, often used by JLo, said that even a driver glancing in the rear view mirror sparked Lopez to berate him for invading her privacy. Unsurprisingly, her father eventually refused to drive Jennifer ever again. JLo's new Amazon Prime movies aren't getting the best hype, as some say it is the worst movie ever made. One reviewer made a list called the reasons why this sucked. I had no idea what was going on in the movie, she says. There was no theme, actually. There were too many themes. There were so many talented artists in the movie who were used more as props. They should have had a bigger role. She goes on to say, this movie seems like an ode to herself for nailing down a man, Ben Affleck. It's not really about love. This is a movie about conquering a man. She's basically telling everybody that the other relationships that her and Ben had were just filler until they could be together again. Her kids and Ben kids are going to be watching this. Do they really need to know how much she loves sleeping with their dad? We all know it's not her voice singing those songs and that she continues by saying, and if it is, auto-tune should get a lot of the credit. She is narcissistic, over the top, and way too in love with herself. For people clicking more than two stars, did you actually watch it or are you just clicking on five stars because you love this ego maniac? Yikes. All right, back to Ben and Jennifer. More inside details of their private life were released in her accompanying documentary that was just released this past week. Early in the documentary, Lopez reveals that she showed her musical collaborators a collection of letters that Affleck gave to her as a gift. This book is a book that Ben gave me on our first Christmas back together. It's every letter and email that we wrote to each other from 20 years ago and today, she says. The cover of the thick binder says, handwritten, the greatest love story never told by Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, 2001 to 2022 and counting. Jennifer explains, it became like our Bible and we just left it there in the studio. Ben Affleck, however, was surprised their correspondences were made public. I was like, you've been showing all the musicians all these letters? And they were like, yeah, we call you Pen Affleck, he recalls in the documentary. I did really find the beauty and the poetry and the irony in the fact that it's the greatest love story never told, and if you're making a record about it, that seems kind of like you're telling it. He adds later that he had to adjust to the change. But things that are private, I've always felt are sacred and special because they're private. So this was something of an adjustment for me. All right, that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more celebrity.